Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 14th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, 450 pages of documents have just been declassified, and they prove what we've been telling you for years. that The president and top defense officials have lied and been lying to us about what they knew about Benghazi. Now, the documents show that just minutes after the consulate in Benghazi came under attack, the nation's top defense officials were informed that the event was a terrorist attack. And this means, of course, that the president and then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton also knew. So this, of course, raises the question of why for two weeks did the president and these other top military officials press this false narrative that the assault grew spontaneously out of a demonstration over an anti-Islam video that was produced in America. Numerous aides to the president and St uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton repeatedly told the public in the weeks following the murder of Ambassador Stevens and three other Americans that there was no evidence that the killings were the result of a premeditated terrorist attack. Of course, this was all going on while Obama was running for re-election in a very hotly contested bid. So it was only after he won re-election that Disclosures expose that this narrative was false and that they indeed lied. And of course, the Obama administration had to ultimately acknowledge that its early statements were untrue. And so while our president is given carte blanche to lie to the American public and we continue to allow him to be in office, police are being given complete freedom to murder innocent people. And when we take it to a jury trial, juries are then allowing these guys to get away scot-free. The 2011 beating of a mentally disabled homeless man, Kelly Thomas, who was beaten, tasered, suffocated, and pistol whipped by no less than six police officers, and all of this was caught on video. That has resulted in an acquittal for two police officers. And what's even more disturbing was that a jury found the two police officers not guilty on all char charges of murder and manslaughter. And even though they can be heard on that videotape saying, you see these fists, they are about to F you up. These cops maliciously beat this man on video for 20 minutes. It's a horrendous video. I can't even watch it. The, the man is pleading and screaming for life. He's calling out for his daddy. And the jury just decided that Thomas... Coincidentally, you know, he chose to die of this undiagnosed heart condition in the hospital five days after he was beaten unconscious and he never regained consciousness. And an attorney for one of those police officers said, these peace officers were doing their job. They had no malice in their heart. Well, I am sorry, but we have not called these guys peace officers for a long time and they're definitely not there to uphold the peace. But you know who else doesn't have malice in their hearts? Serial killers, cold-blooded killers, people who have no emotions. If you just listen to that man pleading on the videotape, to not be able to stop yourself or to figure out another way, six men beat him and were restraining him to just cuff the guy, put him in a cop car, but instead there's a huge pile of blood on the ground and these guys are just getting their rocks off of beating this man who was mentally disabled and homeless, when you are on a jury, you have the opportunity to decide if the law is just, not whether or not the police officers broke the law, but whether or not their actions are just. You get to decide. So if you consent to this kind of action, like these people on this jury did, if you consent to this kind of tyranny, then you are consenting to this cesspool of corruption that has saturated our society. This is a reflection of the society we live in, the way these police officers were, and then the way the jury just allowed and consented. They're only going to act like this if you give them your consent. And this is what's creating the society where 6,000 reports of child abuse and neglect go uninvestigated by the Child Protective Services. Another government agency that's totally run amok with corruption and incompetence has been proven to be so bad at doing their job in Arizona that Governor Jan Brewer has signed an order that 
completely abolished the state's Child Protective Services Agency. She absorbed it and replaced it with a new division. Now, this move comes in response to an internal investigation that revealed 6,000 reports of child abuse or neglect that were never investigated by CPS. So basically, they're just sitting around getting paid to not do their jobs. They're very quick to snatch your kids away, but then they're never going to follow up on any reports of abuse, where I've already covered in plenty of cases where foster kids are abused or put into these really awful situations with child sex trafficking and porn and getting in, you know, pimps go after these kids because they're not looked after. And here, at least in Arizona, the governor is doing something about it. Uh, hopefully, you know, she'll be able to do a good, a better job than what the CPS there was doing, but then she absorbed this responsibility into her office. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see if she does a little bit better of a job in the Child Protective Services there. And in even more injustice, man, I'm sorry, the news today is filled with it. The Supreme Court hands Monsanto a victory over farmers on their GMO seed patents. Uh, they now have the ability to sue farmers whose fields may be inadvertently contaminated. Now, this means the high court left intact a federal appeals court decision that had thrown out a lawsuit by the organic seed growers and uh, over 80 other plaintiffs against Monsanto. It was just seeking to challenge the company's aggressive claims on their GMO patents, as well as just trying to get Monsanto from suing anyone whose field is inadvertently contaminated. Now, Monsanto has filed over 140 lawsuits against farmers for planting the seeds without permission, and they've also settled around 700 other cases without suing. Now, the appeals court based their decision on Monsanto's promise not to sue farmers whose crops contained trace amounts of the company's biotechnology products. So Monsanto can basically patent their seed per, for profit and then they can sue you rather than allowing you to sue them for, they, they contaminate your organic field and they're gonna sue you. That's like if I'm spray painting my car in my driveway and some of my paint splatters on your house and then I sue you for having my paint on your house. It's ridiculous. And then Monsanto is one of the companies that's trying to get our bought and paid for Congress to fast track the TPP so that they can take this kind of overarching power to do whatever they want, this lawlessness, into countries all over the world. And then they don't even have to go through the courts, the local courts. They will go to international tribunals and obviously decide in favor of these huge corporations because it's becoming clear every day who really runs this country and who really pulls Obama's puppet strings. And in other rulings that are running counter to the Constitution, a court has dealt a blow to anonymity and the First Amendment. The Virginia Court of Appeals ruled that Yelp users have no right to be anonymous when they post negative comments about a business online. Now, even though the Supreme Court has recognized on numerous occasions the right to speak anonymously and has associated this right to the First Amendment. Now, one case said protections for anonymous speech are vital to democratic discourse. Anonymity is a shield from the tyranny of the majority. It thus exemplifies the purpose behind the Bill of Rights and of the First Amendment in particular to protect unpopular individuals from retaliation at the hand of an intolerant society. And our online anonymity, it continues to be jeopardized. And with that, private web browsers are seeing a really huge increase in web traffic. You know, just because you Google something doesn't mean you have to actually go to google.com and backdoor all of your information to the NSA. Now, Start Page spokesperson and privacy expert Dr. Katherine Albrecht says that every time Edward Snowden shares a new revelation about government spying, they get an influx of new users. Their privacy policy is very simple. Albrecht says, we don't collect any information, nada, zilch, zero. No IP addresses are recorded and no tracking cookies are used. If any government comes knocking, there's nothing for them to get, period. Now the same, of course, cannot be said for Google, which has a very detailed relationship with US intelligence. 
And while you may be browsing privately, just know that businesses are starting to build shopper profiles on you using new sensors that track your phones. Turnstile Solutions has provided businesses with sensors that follow signal emitted from Wi-Fi enabled smartphones. This allows these businesses to track habits like traveling from a yoga studio to a restaurant, to a coffee shop, sports stadiums, hotels, and what nightclubs you might want to go to. A business owner said that instead of offering a general promotion that may or may not hit a nerve, we can promote specifically to the customer's taste. Now these location trackers are bound to ignite privacy concerns because of course they can track whether you're going to see a specialist or a hospital and then sell that data to marketers. And just as a heads up, the U.S. doesn't need to get your consent in order to track you. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we'll be right back. I've got an update on Obamacare. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Well, we've been covering the stories of thousands of American families who have lost their health insurance coverage once Obamacare forced their insurance companies to cancel their plan. Well, one of those families was the Daverts. But the Daverts aren't like any other American family. Their twin children have brittle bone disease as well as the mother and the father has cerebral palsy. This is a family who needs frequent medical care. Now, the parents had been covered under Medicare, but that didn't cover their children. And their children were both previously insured with a plan that wouldn't exceed $2,500 annually. Well, now, thanks to the new Unaffordable Care Act, the family who needs frequent medical care are looking at a plan where they'll pay $10,000 annually for their children. And Mrs. Davert says, you know, we go to the doctor quite frequently. We're definitely going to meet that $10,000 every single year. But what's even worse is that when Mrs. Davert checked to make sure that her family was signed up for this more expensive coverage because they had to sign up for it, she needed to cover her kids, she learned that her application had been lost. And then she made several other attempts to sign up again. But she learned then, once she was able to finally sign up, that her children had been denied coverage. I'm sorry, what? Denied coverage? I thought this was the exact reason why we have government mandated insurance. This was the this was the big lie that the American people were told, which made made people vote for Obamacare so that families 
and especially families who really needed insurance would be caught.